Hello everyone, I'm still in Turkey here and in this week's episode we're going to be talking about straight verticals in architecture photography ah, and the things I have to do because I'm heading up towards a little village mosque, another one in my uh, ongoing series I've been doing and there's a road that's collapsed and it looks like fairly recently so I'm having to walk the final four kilometres by foot. Check it out. Let's get there though, shall we? So we made it and it's taken basically half the day. It's a disaster class, but We've finally made it to the mosque. It's a little bit echoey in this part, so you have to bear with me on that. But uh, I'm going to grab some straight lines in here. And this is kind of looks like it's started to be renovated. They've certainly done some maintenance work on it, but there's definitely a few nice shots to be had. However, it is difficult to get those verticals straight, and that's what we're going to be looking at inside this mosque. <laughs> set up. Before I do that, I just want to explain the importance of verticals in architecture photography. Everybody knows that with architecture photography, uh, you're trying to get your lines straight in camera and trying to get uh, basically everything lined up nice and straight, but also leading the viewer's eye through, you know, through your composition, basically. The thing about it is, even though I've had people on tours and workshops with me, I've had people uh, with me in the flesh, I still regularly see them then returning back to fault, to default, putting their tripod position like this, upwards, or down here, downwards. In terms of getting it right and knowing what's right and what's wrong, that's what we're looking at today. Getting the vertical straight, even if it means sacrificing some of the interior, is usually the way to go especially in the commercial world of architecture photography. And I can't stress enough how difficult it's going to be to get straight verticals in this wooden old mosque. I say wooden, the top part's wooden, the bottom is actually concrete or brick. But there is some interesting details in here. So for this image, I'm opting actually for my Canon 24mm tilt shift, but I'm not going to use the tilt or shift function on this at all. I'm actually just going to use it kind of as is, basically. So it's going to be 24 mil prime lens. And the reason for that is because I'm filming on my 15 to 35. To be honest with you, choosing the right lens is what's important, not the fact that I'm using this lens. I just know that this lens, 24 mil, isn't super wide, and that means it's going to help me control those edges and stop the distortion happening on the far end of the lens. Even when you're shooting with a wide angle lens, you've still got to think about the fact that that could happen, or you've got to kind of learn to fix it in post. Now, it goes without saying, of course, if you're photographing regularly these kind of structures and these kind of places, and you're starting to produce images that look kind of straight in camera, look wow factor, knowing how to do that and getting it right in camera is the thing that sets you apart and makes you look like you know what you're doing. You're getting your line straight, framing things right in camera, and then actually kind of pulling it into post and kind of processing it and making it the best you can. That sets you apart. However, there is of course times where you can break that norm. 
But in this episode, we're looking to try and nail it, get things right in camera first of all, and see if we can get a pleasing image. There's a lot of strange windows in here. I can already see things don't line up very well, but let's give it a go, shall we? Now I say it all the time, but a good tripod, a solid tripod, and one that's easy to use, more importantly, is always gonna assist you with getting these kind of verticals straight and nailing everything in camera, basically. I mean, for me, I look, I've barely touched the kind of camera itself. I've put the tripod in a nice fixed position. It's not going anywhere, it's locked down, and it's now easy to just do fine adjustments in camera, little, little tweaks to get things perfect. One of the most important things when you're lining up images like this, is to watch your edges of your frame. So in the camera itself, first of all, I've positioned it on the tripod straight, nice and straight. So you've all seen architecture where the building looks like it's falling in on itself or leaning away. Well, that's simply a case of the camera being pointed up like so, and that will lead to the architecture drifting and falling away, or if it's photographed slightly pointing downwards, that makes the architecture sort of lean towards you more. Even if pointing down or up is just subtle, both of them are gonna really be unhelpful when it comes to composing and framing up your image. So here we've got the camera now nice and straight on the tripod. I'm just gonna pull this center column up a tiny bit, a fraction. Now, I've got lots of problems in this building. I mean, there's lots of things that are way off. I'm gonna try and line things up the best I can in terms of where I think things should be. And that would be, for me, the main architectural features. And that would be what I'd say to you too, is try and, uh, try and do it so that the main features are kind of basically straight. Central features, um, columns, posts, things like this, you know. So I've lined things up. Now my windows are well off, like I mean well off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave them because that is just the way it is. So I've used a bunch of stuff basically to assist me in lining everything up here. And I'm gonna kind of go through what some of those things are now. I've used, first of all, the lines on the back of the LCD, the grid lines. You could use some sort of level. I use an in-camera level. Uh, and that tells me if the camera is kind of like, you know, left or right, um, sitting correctly on the tripod as in balanced correctly. And you could use a tripod level, spirit level, but mine doesn't work and I've never used it anyway. They're not 100% reliable, these things. Now, live view will assist you greatly when it comes to lining up these kind of shots. Also, if your camera has the ability to do it, overexpose your image and portray that overexposed image on the LCD. In other words, overexpose it so your live view looks much brighter That'll help you. It'll help you sort of look through the image, work out where everything needs to be. So I'm just gonna show you quickly in camera my verticals and where I'm suddenly currently positioned and what things are looking like. You can see here what I've gone, gone for, but yeah, the architecture's way off, you know. Um, if I pull myself over here a little bit more, that will look fairly decent, um, but we've still got problems with the windows, with the lining up and adjustment of where the banister is, there's, there's a lot of issues in this building. Something like this is probably as good as I can get. For me then, it was just a case of using my geared head to make fine adjustments to my composition. I've kept my tilt shift lens, you know, it's not shifted at all, it's straight. And what I'm doing is I'm actually just tweaking on each of the three handles, rotating the camera like so, I'm using the head like so, just to be able to make fine adjustments, really to try to kind of fine tune the composition. So the best tips I can give you as you're doing this is to constantly use your LCD, look at your view throughout, put your grid lines on, and look at the edges of the building to the edge of your frame on the LCD. 
You can also zoom in and out if you've got a zoom lens. I haven't in today, but you could do to go through your focal length. The lines of the architecture should mirror those lines now on camera. In other words, they should be straight, you know, no curves, no bent upwards and downwards. You're always gonna have the architecture off like I've got here, wayward, things not designed in the way that you'd want it to be. And trust me, that happens all the time. So now once we've kind of lined things up and got things straight, I'm then going to basically re-expose the image, pull the exposure way back down to where it should be to take this photograph. Once I've done that, and I've actually activated bracketing in here as well, three brackets, two stops apart. I'm ISO 160, it's absolutely fine. And uh, I'm gonna take that image. We can all see what a terrible job I've done of lining things up in this building. I've chosen the worst building, by the way, for this example, <laughs> the worst one. So here we are in camera. This here, this banister and this ceiling were not lining up correctly. A little trick you can do is kind of fool the viewer's eye a little bit. I've actually moved my tripod position right and then pointed the camera slightly left. And then in the back of the LCD, it helps to keep all of my lines straight and level. I'm actually pretty much ready to shoot this. I'm gonna do that now. I think it's fine. It's not a perfect shot. I'm focusing on the railings and we're good. So you can still see the railing a little bit on the left hand side, it's kind of lifting. But to be honest with you, I mean, I've done a pretty decent job considering the state of the architecture in here. Difficult place for me to photograph this one as well, and it would be anybody, I think, coming in here for the first time. But in terms of my verticals, I'm pretty sure I nailed all of those. And use the tips that I pretty much just give you, that can assist you too when you're in these places for the first time, like I am today, really. If you want to support this channel, you can do so by purchasing one of the books listed in the description below. Uh, I'm just gonna have another little look around, see what else I can grab. If I do find any other shots, I'll pop them on the screen too. But other than that, I think that's me for this week, guys. And until next time, bye-bye for now. If you've got any comments, leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you again very, very soon.